Welcome to the year 323 BC. It's been 13 years since a young Macedonian king decided to revenge his Greek forefathers. However, a campaign formed through a mutual grudge eventually turned into the Hellenistic conquest of the world. The results were unmatched. At just 30 years old, Alexander ruled over 50 million people, a third of the human population back then, and it only took him 13 years to accomplish this. But how was it even possible? A person who is often overlooked when talking about great generals and leaders of antiquity is Alexander's father, King Philip II. Philip secured Macedonian control over the Greek states and reorganized its military. With the phalanx in its center, Philip built the most capable fighting force of the era. So when Alexander took over the power after his father's death, he already possessed a true force to be reckoned with, using it to destroy the ancient city of Thebes, ending a Greek revolt. The kings of ancient Macedon were not distant rulers. They actively fought alongside their armies. Alexander, surpassing expectations, consistently led the cavalry himself. This dedication extended into Persian lands where he narrowly escaped death during the battle at the Granicus River. Throughout his Asian campaigns, the young king faced nine severe injuries. His soldiers knew he'd sacrifice for them just as they would for him. Moreover, Alexander the Great displayed generosity toward his soldiers and generals. They were rewarded with significant spoils of war, including wealth and land acquired during military campaigns. This generosity fostered an incredibly loyal army, marching far beyond their intended destinations, conquering distant lands with superior military tactics. While loyalty and devotion are commendable, the outcome of wars is often determined by battles. In both the battles of Issus and Gaugamela, the Greek forces, led by Alexander the Great, faced significant numerical disadvantages, being outnumbered two to one and two and a half to one, respectively. Despite this, the Greeks emerged victorious decisively. The key differentiator lay in the coordination and discipline exhibited by the Persian forces. On one side, there were conscripted peasants compelled into service by a king who, in both engagements, fled the battlefield. On the opposing side, disciplined soldiers, for whom the battlefield was a second home, fought under the leadership of their king, Alexander. This stark contrast contributed to the Persian forces' lack of cohesion. Alexander's success also stemmed from the implementation of an early version of the famed Blitzkrieg strategy, emphasizing rapid maneuvers and swift strikes to outmaneuver the enemy. This strategic innovation played a crucial role in the Greek victories. However, signs of the Persian Empire's decline were evident. Following consecutive defeats in Greece during the 5th century BC, Persia halted its expansion. In the century preceding Alexander's reign, internal conflicts such as civil wars and rebellions further weakened Persia. Although Darius commanded a massive army, Persia was gradually receding on the world stage, while Macedon possessed the momentum of an ascending military superpower. One of the crucial elements contributing to Alexander's success was his willingness to embrace diverse cultures. He demonstrated respect for Persian traditions by adopting their clothing, allowing Persian children to receive Greek military training, and marrying a Persian noblewoman, Roxanne. For many foreigners, Alexander wasn't seen as an invader, but as a liberator who freed nations from Persian suppression without erasing their distinct identities. Alexander's determination and tirelessness played a pivotal role. He persuaded his companions to press on after the Battle of Gaugamela, ensuring the destruction of the last remnants of resistance across the empire. The Greeks extended their influence over regions like Bactria, Sogdiana, and Gandhara, even crossing the formidable Hindu Kush mountain range to enter India. This marked an unprecedented eastern expansion by Europeans. At this juncture, 
Alexander commanded an army of around 50,000 men, comprising battle-hardened veterans and soldiers from various parts of the newly established Macedonian Persian Empire. No other army in the world could withstand this formidable force. Alexander the Great's success lay not only in his ability to conquer diverse territories, but also in his skill to hold them. Despite his achievements, his untimely death at a young age prevents us from examining whether his empire would have endured longer than it did in reality.